The California woman accused of killing eight-year-old Sandra Cantu appeared in court for the first time yesterday. She faces multiple charges, including sexual assault. Melissa Huckabee is under suicide watch this morning. CBS News correspondent John Blackstone reports. CBS News has learned that days before her arrest, Melissa Huckabee was hospitalized after swallowing three X-Acto knife blades. In custody, she's been on suicide watch and was clearly emotional Tuesday as a judge read the charges against her. Did willfully and unlawfully and intentionally, with malice aforethought, murder Sandra Cantu, a human being. Sandra Cantu was last seen alive on security video skipping toward Huckabee's home. What happened to the eight-year-old after that brought a shocking charge and sobs from Huckabee. The crime of rape by instrument in violation of Penal Code Section 289. Kidnapping and rape are special circumstances that could bring the death penalty. We will not make a decision on whether to seek death until we're further down the road in these proceedings. Well, there are basically only three defenses to murder. I didn't do it, I didn't mean to do it, and I was crazy at the time. By the time Melissa Huckabee returns to court here April 24th, she'll have undergone a medical evaluation suggesting a possible strategy for her defense, claiming insanity. John Blackstone, CBS News, Stockton, California. Joining us now to discuss the Cantu case is forensic psychiatrist Dr. Michael Wellner. Good morning, Dr. Wellner. Good morning. What do you make of, of this suspect yesterday, crying in court, the revelation that she swallowed three knives days before her arrest? Well, experience would tell me that you have to be cautious with interpreting too much from someone's uh, appearance in court. People have actually researched those accused of sex offenses and have found that the greatest shame to a suspect is associated with sex offense charges. And my professional experience has told me that that's true. And I'm talking about comparing it even to murder. So she, she's clearly aware of the gravity of what she's accused of, but I think we have to be cautious before um, over-interpreting and, and understanding what really happened. There are still a range of possibilities of, of what happened, and, and clearly one thing is certain is the tragic end of a little girl who yeah. died too soon. Do you think that we're going to see an insanity plea? Uh, well, unless, of course, physical evidence demonstrates that she wasn't responsible or that this is a more complicated story. Then maybe it'll be not guilty. You, you know, th this is a suspect who, who made numerous efforts to um, cover up um, uh, her previous remarks, uh, and those are the kinds of things that make an insanity plea harder. Mm, okay. um, and and uh, she had response, she had uh, communication with the uh, media and other people that, that, uh, that was rational to them. So that may get in the way of, of some of what she's doing. Uh, but again, we have no idea what her role was at, at this point. And, and I, again, we need to be cautious before we go too far with that. If you can, in 10 seconds, give a, a message for parents out there who are afraid. This is a girl who sure. played with the suspect's daughter. Yeah. You know, naturally, this would be terrifying for parents. And I can imagine this as a parent myself. There are a few lessons to be learned quickly. As long as your child and others know that you as a parent are engaged, aware, and communicating with your child. Your child is vulnerable, but if predators know that your child has someone connecting to them, your child is safer just by that. Less likely to be a target. Absolutely. Dr. Michael Wellner. Predators prey on the vulnerable. They make choices. All right. They pick the vulnerable. Thank you very much.